Hey, it's Dry Bear. We're finishing up the first month of season two, the season of blood for Diablo 4. And with it came a bunch of new systems that really help you up your game and getting your character stronger and faster than it's ever been before. And one of the most beloved systems that existed in previous Diablos, specifically Diablo 2, was a trading system where you could actually find gear. There's something that exists in Path of Exile as well. You can go and find specific resources or materials or or gear that fits your character and it's a lot easier because you're unless you're doing solo cell found you're finding the things that you need by connecting with other players online and while there have been many attempts to make this system work for Diablo 4 there's finally one that actually works really well so that's what we're talking about today Diablo dot trade for season 0 and season 1 there's been discord attempts and uh, message boards and forums and things like that but I think this one is actually quite useful and I have been using it several times the way this works you go to Diablo.trade and you link up your battle.net account and there is a, the first question you're going to ask is, is that safe can I share my information and they're quite confident that you have the OAuth there if you do have an authenticator on your account I wouldn't have any worry about connecting your battle net to this site uh, everything seems to be fine and if not you kind of just want to pay attention to it but in general this makes it very easy to trade with random people all online that might have things that you want to buy so once you link your battle.net account to this you can then just use this website to contact them directly without even copying it into game and you can find Find tons of stuff to pick up. Now it's important to know that you can't trade anything legendary and above in the game. So legendary items, unique items, those are bound to your account. You cannot trade those to other players. But what you can trade is yellows that might have really good rolls on the stats. And most importantly for season two, you can buy and sell the materials that you need to summon the bosses in the end game. So the exquisite blood that summons Zeer, the mucus slick egg and the shard of agony that summons Duriel, the living steel that summons Gregor, the malignant heart that summons Varshan, the distilled fear that summons the beast in the ice. You can trade all that extra gold you might be having from the gold increase in season two to summon more bosses to target farm the loot that you need. And if you missed it, I made a quick handy dandy one sheet that goes over all the classes and all the end game bosses and what items they drop. So I'll leave a link for that down below in the description and in the comments as well if you're looking for that. So you can see, okay, I need Duriel, so I'm going to get this item so I can buy these things and that way you can farm exactly what you need for your build. Now keep in mind that this is an open marketplace which means that players are setting their prices and you're willing to accept or deny prices that you may think are not viable but in general it seems like most of these end up being around 40 million gold to summon a boss and you can use that to get the loot that you need or you can have different opportunities that. Now some bosses are less valuable. Zeer and the Beast in the Ice in general generally are less viable just because Duriel is the king of, of value just because he gives you so much and drops uber the uber uniques and on top of that the shard of agony and the mucus slick egg are coming from Varshan and from Gregor and they summon Duriel as well so anything that gets you closer to Duriel is going to have more value overall so once you log into the website you can go to search for items you can go over to consumables tab and you go down here to boss materials and select the boss materials that you're looking for. The next thing you want to do is you want to set a range of prices that you're looking for or quantities that you're looking for and you hit search. You do want to pay attention to how long ago the listing was made. Some of these are super fresh. Someone just made it, which means they're probably still online and waiting for someone to buy or sell. Uh, and make sure you do filter by request type, want to buy, want to sell, so you don't make the mistake that I made, which is message people that are wanting to buy and see if that you, they want to sell to you, even though they, they're looking to buy as well. Then just pay attention to whether or not they're online right now, so you can give them a message. And you can actually choose to message them through the website itself. So hit contact go up to the uh, the message, hit send message. You can choose the quantity that you want to select from this person. It'll automatically fill the message. And these all get sent to other players on the site through Battle.net. And you can check your message log on the site. Or if you want to, you can link your Discord as well. And it'll send them a Discord message. And you can actually uh, talk to them on Discord if you want. But a lot of people are actually using this very frequently and making tons of gold or 
con con converting their gold into more materials or more gear for their character. Now, the flip side of this is being able to buy very valuable yellows. And the value or the cost of these is kind of all over the place. There's not really any regulation on what is the good price. I mean, think about it. If 40 million summons a boss, then uh, you would expect a really good piece of gear to go in the hundreds of millions for gold. And that's honestly not too bad to farm if you're you're committing to it and selling things. So you kind of get in that gold there. But there are actually a good amount of yellows on here. And you can select the mode, the type, the equipment, the restriction for class, the sockets, category. And remember, you can always re-roll any one of the stats on here. So even if it's something that drops with a barbarian stat on it, you can re-roll it on your druid if you need to, if the other three stats are still really good. And you can come down and set the item power range, the price range, the level required on it. And you can also add an effect group, which is a stat that you're looking for on the item. Say you want critical strike damage with bone skills and you want to have a minimum amount on that for a specific ring. You can set the slot there and look for it. And if you're paying attention to this marketplace regularly, you can actually find some really good deals. There are people that jump on here that want a quick sale. They don't want to, you know, they're not, they're not trying to nickel and dime. They just want it gone. Get it out of your inventory. My stash is the size of a backpack anyway. Just get rid of it. And they'll put very low prices on these. And because it is an open market, you can end up benefiting greatly from that. So this goes well beyond just typing in trade chat, hoping to find something from someone else. There's actually a tool that works that allows you to find yellows and find materials and consumables to make your season two experience even better. You can even use your main character that's good at farming right now to farm gold or materials and sell them, and then use that to beef up a second character you might be bringing up in season two that you can just easily gear out with yellows and fill them out with drops and make sure that they have everything that they need. And once you know that you have everything you need from a specific boss, you can use my handy dandy one sheet to verify that as well, including the cosmetics that each of the end game bosses drop. You can then just anytime you get the materials to summon that boss, since you know you're done with it, you can just sell them on the trade site and just say, hey, I'm a, I want to get this gold instead. Now, the strategy for making gold in season two hasn't really changed from season zero and season one. What you want to do is you always want to salvage your legendary items because there's very specific materials that you need from that. If you're not respecting all the time, you don't really need to be salvaging your blues, your whites, or your yellows, but you can run out of those materials if you are respecking and re-rolling and re-enchanting. You might run out of the materials that the yellows give you. So you always want to be salvaging your legendary items, sell your unique items because they give a bunch of gold, and then for the yellows, I would just sell them to a vendor to make gold. So just mark everything, salvage the legendaries, sell everything else to a vendor, and if you're doing this regularly, making sure you pick up everything that you find and you sell it, you should actually be very quickly able to farm the materials to summon bosses on your own, farm gold that you can use to buy more materials to farm more bosses, or farm gold to buy perfectly rolled yellow items that fit your build just right. But this is another resource that has come available for people that may not be using it right now in Diablo 4 that makes their season 2 experience even better than it already was compared to past seasons. So I want to make sure that everyone was aware of it. Let me know what you think about using this down below in the comments. If you found value in today's video, leave a like down below, leave a comment for the algorithm to help this video get seen by more people and don't forget to check out my other channels for other content and other stuff and other things.